Today I'm joined by a remarkable guest, Esther Richter, a fashion and sustainability expert. Esther's journey from launching a unique jewelry line to embracing sustainable fashion and secondhand luxury reflects a deep commitment to creativity and environmental consciousness in the fashion industry. We explore Esther's transition from Paris to Jerusalem, her ventures into e-commerce with Etsy, Amazon, and eBay, and her latest endeavors in fashion blogging and personal styling. Whether you're a fashion enthusiast, aspiring designer, or simply curious about sustainable trends, this episode promises rich insights into the evolving landscape of fashion. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Ecom Pulse, your heartbeat to the world of e-commerce. I'm your host, Eitan Kotter. Join us as we meet with industry leaders, marketing experts, and the innovative minds behind the tech that is shaping the e-commerce future. So plug in, gear up, and get ready for a pulse-pounding journey into the heart of e-commerce. Hi Esther, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, hi Eitan. I'm good. Good at yourself. I'm okay. Thanks a lot. I uh, really appreciate the time and effort you put in you know, joining our podcast. Uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting one because the topic is really, I think, very, very interesting and definitely in the world of commerce. We're going to talk a lot about the fashion sector, the fashion industry, and what you are doing specifically. But let's start with your story. Everyone has a story. <laughs> and you can start whenever you want, right? Yes, it's really interesting. It would be interesting to know, you know, how you got into the industry and what are you working on these days? Sure. Um, so I'm Esther. I'm 41. I, uh, I'm from Paris. I uh, moved to Israel about 12 years ago and um, I uh, studied marketing in the university in Paris. And when I arrived here, I... Um, I decided to start from scratch everything. So I launched uh, my own jewelry line um, out of a fabric, pieces of fabric that I sewed. So it mm -hmm. was more connected to fashion in, somehow, in some ways. So I, I created this line. It was a, a very nice experience. I learned all about the e-commerce uh, aspect of the, of the job and, um, and the creativity uh, it implies. Um, I also started working back then in Padani, which is a, a, a store, like a jewelry store, a higher jewelry store in, the, in Israel. We have like a few, you have about nine, I think, nine stores. Mm -hmm. so I learned all about diamonds, uh, fine diamonds, fine watches, which was also a nice experience. Um, so from that experience, I, um, I basically went back to the marketing aspect of uh, of my my education and I combined it with jewelry. So I started working for jewelers, uh, building their branding, their e-commerce websites. Um, so I worked for a few jewelry designers, Israelis, mm -hmm. also international designers. Um, I'm actually working a lot with Upwork. I don't know if you're familiar with Upwork. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is where I'm from, basically. Um, right now, I'm, I live in Jerusalem still. I'm a freelancer. And um, I uh, usually work uh, every day in the WeWork office in Jerusalem, which is mm -hmm. really nice and friendly. And, uh, and most recently, I decided to go even deeper into fashion. I uh, launched my own uh, blog, fashion blog. Uh, it's all about sustainability and secondhand uh, clothing, online clothing. And uh, and next to it, I decided to to create to launch a, a fashion styling uh, uh, offer because I really love uh, this aspect of fashion. Mm -hmm. So so this is where I am right now. <laughs> Wow, that's an amazing story. So you started somewhere with Padani, which is like, you know, rich customers, high ticket, you know, expensive jewelry. And today, you're, I know you're totally focused on e-commerce, sustainability, secondhand. That's like a huge step. Right? <laughs> I know which direction, but I mean, share with us what, what do you, I mean, how, what brings you to secondhand sustainability and how do you see the differences? Obviously, there's a huge difference in terms of shoppers, uh, you know, buying, you know, rich, uh, very expensive item versus secondhand. 
Um, I'm actually, I was always uh, drawn to uh, to second hand, even at a very early age. Um, back in Paris, there I used to shop at second hand stores. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, you know, when you were a student, uh, you have like a little budget, so it's very fun to to go to thrift stores and um, and buy this, you know, ten dollar, five dollar items. Yeah. But then you realize that the the style of the clothes is very different from, from uh, what you could see in like regular stores back then. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then bit by bit, you discover like these unique pieces from. 70s, the 80s, it's just crazy. Um, and of course, if you go further than that and you find these Chanel or Dior, uh, you know, like uh, pieces, they were just even more blown away. Wow, that's winning the lottery, you know? <laughs> I actually love secondhand uh, yeah. luxury designers, so I buy all my bags on uh, on this website called Vestiaire Collective, which is a French uh, online um retailer i mean second mm -hmm. retailer. and there there i can find all these these you know <laughs> tools um so yeah that's that's uh that's basically what i what i like to do i also love the 30s era so i always look for these wow. easy pieces on ebay um so everything that is used i take <laughs> everything okay which vintage sounds really good in my ear and uh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, so I know you have also experience with Amazon, Etsy, eBay, right? Uh, what exactly you know you 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 you're doing there, and since when you started working on these platforms? Um, like basically, I, as a jeweler back then, I used to uh, list my products on uh, Etsy, which is great mm -hmm. for jewelry. Okay. It became really really big uh, over the last ten years. Mm -hmm for artists, even uh, Amazon, actually. Yeah, there is Amazon as, uh, Artisans, I think it's called, or like for smaller designers. So mm -hmm. it's also nice to have like a, a way to, to show your products on such a big uh, website. And eBay, of course, which is great for secondhand uh, findings. Yeah. <clears throat> I love it too, but um, uh, I also work for clients who wanted to develop on these platforms. Mm -hmm. So I help them to define uh, the shops, uh, to, to pick the, the selection, the collections, uh, of course, to, uh, to list the products, uh, which is a big story. It depends on Amazon. It's really different in terms of SEO than on eBay. So it's a big deal. Yes. Uh, or Etsy. Uh, they all have their, their own algorithms. Uh, so. So this is what I, I was doing on this platform. Yes. So working with these, uh, uh, let's say, you know, artists or jewelry designers and helping them launch on Amazon or Etsy, what was usually the process? I mean, how did you, if, if for our listeners who are thinking of going this route, what what is the best practice and recommendation you can provide for a for a very very effective effective process? Obviously, you mentioned SEO, which is important. What else is important in launching? You know, on these platforms. Um, well, um, if you're working alone, let's say if you are like a, a designer, yeah. Today, I think you can use uh, tools like ChatGPT and other uh, cool AI uh, solutions to boost quickly your uh, your your presence on these platforms. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you need to be careful because you. You know, the prompts, if you don't do it correctly, it will give you like always the same style. So you need to precise, to be precise in what you want to, to, to give. Um, so these are really cool tools. Uh, or you can use like a small SEO expert or, or an agency. Although if it's, if you are a starter, it's, it's better, uh, just to even to work with one guy, expert guy who knows how to okay. deal with key, organic uh, keywords. So mm -hmm. Right. Um, you have also the ads, but this is a different kind of uh, job, like a completely different yes. <laughs> job and, and budget. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, you know, you need to have like a nice uh, branding for, you know, like very good banners show your products uh, okay. also videos are very important mm -hmm. 
on SE, for example, it's like a must. Uh, everything has changed. Definitely, you need to be out there. You need to. Uh, it's like a mini movie productions. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. So video is uh, very important. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Anything else for the preparation of launching the store there? What about the operational side or you know supply chain and that that part of the business? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, of course, you need to sh- look at the competition and try to price your products the proper way. It's a bit complex because you need to make sure that uh, you're not losing any money yeah. uh, because you need to adjust with uh, uh, all the platforms, uh, commissions and fees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of, of course, the shipping. So all these aspects are a bit more complex. Uh, it's good to work with a marketing uh, manager of that field. Okay. Uh, well, I expect the designer for sure to be good at pricing their products, but uh, but it's also good to make sure that it's like aligned with the competition for sure. Yes, yes. You mentioned ChatGPT and doing a few things with AI. So how can AI you know, benefit designers? Beyond the chat GPT specifically, what what do you see happening, you know, all over in the adoption of AI in the, you know, the, generally in the fashion industry and also in the, um, you know, specifically for designers? Definitely, uh, again, the time, um, like, uh, you gain time a lot, you know, in all these aspects of the job. Yeah. Like, uh, when you had to explain somebody to do it for you, it's that you, you, you can just explain to chat GPT. And uh, I must say it's pretty fast. Yes. <laughs> so yes. All the steps that you need to do, definitely this AI uh, prompts yeah. can help you. But you need to, to be an expert most of the time in order to get the, the right responses. Like you need to yes. know what you're, what you're asking for. Do you see AI also implementing also in the design uh, phase? Everything. Like everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I've been using okay. it for a year and uh, almost a year. And yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, you. I became better at it. Okay. Right so, uh, are you happy with the result or not yet? <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm still not sure about the design aspect. Okay. Banners, uh, I feel like I still need to do the design or ask for a designer to, to do it for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and in terms of the product uh, the, uh, itself, in terms of the design of the product or the manufacturing aspect? It's more about the marketing banners. More about the marketing. More banners uh, for your website or for these this platforms like eBay, Etsy. Uh, yeah, it's a bit standardized. I think it needs to be more advanced, the design part. Sure, it's sure. So I know sustainability is a big uh, big issue, definitely, in the fashion industry, and it's something that you are uh, very close to you as well. So what triggers you to be more specialized in it, even writing a blog around this topic? I'm trying to... like I, I want to feel good about... Uh, mm-hmm. like I love fashion, and I really want to feel good when I buy clothing and I want to contribute to, to society, the world, uh, okay. you know, uh, with everything that we hear and see about what's going on with the, 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 the factories where they make uh, clothing. It's just, it feels that we made many, many mistakes in the past and in, in many other fields, but this one is very, very big. Yeah. So definitely I feel I feel good knowing that I, I make an improvement. Okay. So what specifically, what are, what type of improvement you, we can achieve these days and what specifically in sustainability is working? So first of all, regarding secondhand clothing, I, I really love it because it's there. It's already there. The product is already made. Uh, so you lower the, <clears throat> you lower the, the production of uh, of new new clothes, whether sure. you have so many already available to you, okay, uh, and especially you know with the trends, fashion trends, a lot of them are coming back. So it's always nice to see that 
these pieces already exist and you can just reuse them. Yeah. Right. And also, of course, you, it feels unique. Like you, you get this one piece that uh, almost nobody has. And it's really nice. Um, and regarding um, like new products, it's a, it's a bit harder. I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm managing like in every aspect. Yeah. Find sustainable uh, uh, clothing, but um, I'm trying hard just to look at the material, uh, where it's coming from, which brand, uh, more and more. Uh, so yeah, definitely, like uh, it's very like I'm trying to educate myself. I'm doing this blog actually to educate myself even more on yes. the top. Yes, and you know. Um, I'm also on Instagram and on the social media. I'm trying to just show the girls out there, the bloggers, the fashion bloggers that, you know, the, the girls who love fashion, uh, that um, you can be trendy, but at the same time, you can wear just secondhand. It, it's fine. You know, it's it's totally fine. Yes. On the opposite, you don't have to go insane and buy the latest item on Zara. I mean, Zara, talking about Zara, I know that mm -hmm. they are making a lot of efforts to, like H and M, I see that they are um, changing a, a lot in the regarding uh, sustainability. So, like, yes. uh, but uh, yeah, we are all learning. <laughs> Interesting. And, and all this secondhand, I know you're spending a lot of time researching for secondhand, you know, cool stuff. Thirties. Is it is it uh, kind of a business for you? I mean, you you are you're trying to sell it. You're trying to promote it. What's the you know the business model here for you? Uh, the blog is more like a like an educational thing, but I would hope at some point. Some point, yeah. <laughs> I have like a few nice pieces out there uh, that I would love to. Uh, yeah, there are a few pieces in my closet that I would love to to sell uh, on this blog, but this is not a priority. Then. Yes, yes, yes. And specifically, when you work with uh, you know with brands or with uh, designers. Um, I know that uh, you're also, you know, helping them and consult them on a variety of other marketing uh, aspects, right? So marketing campaigns, emails. Please share more about what's the ideal marketing plan, right, for for a designer in the field. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well. Uh... Also, I would say that ChatGPT is making it <laughs> way faster. I mean, the, uh, I used to work with templates uh, about all the steps, all the milestones in order to build a, a marketing campaign and uh, mm -hmm. or to develop a brand from scratch or re redesign, rebranding. But with the help of ChatGPT, everything makes it uh, easier for me. Um, But I would say that today everything has changed. Like uh, customers are more and more uh, uh, picky. They they know uh, already uh, yeah. what to receive, what to get from these designers, from these brands. So, uh, of course, about storytelling. Uh, but yeah, it's about uh, so much more. Like I think you need you need to to find ideas like uh, <laughs> out of the box. Yes, sure. out of the box. Any uh, examples or uh, any interesting uh, use case that you can share with us? Um, <laughs> wow. Um, there is actually this designer I worked with uh, uh, in the past. His name is Sharon Layani. Um, mm -hmm. He used to work for a, a big company in Israel called Evel, which is also a, a pearl designer. Okay. Uh, so Sharon uh, started alone to launch his his uh, his his brand. So he, he had like a few pearls, like you know this baroque. It's called baroque pearls. They are like uh, with all kinds of shapes. Like they come naturally like that in the nature. Yeah. And he showed me like a, a few of these pearls, and he, he like he knows like he's a design. He's a maker. He knows how to mm -hmm. how to. To work with pearls, like he worked many years yeah. with whispers. So, so we understood, like we straight away we understood each other. And he wanted instead of um, <clears throat> he wanted the gold to fit the pearl, not the opposite way. You know, like when you do a setting of a 
of a pearl or a diamond yep. to mold, like to shape the, the, the diamond in order to fit the setting. So yes. here's the opposite uh, way. Uh -huh. So the story was all about that, the nature of wow. the <laughs> adapt yeah. the nature and not the other way around so the pearl is like that is all kinds of shapes and we he molded like the gold around it so all this concept was around that mm -hmm. so so yeah i suppose finding the right story uh, to the customer is like the best uh, interesting the best interesting yeah, yeah, yeah definitely what, what do you see in the industry in the fashion industry like as a whole, you know, being there for, for so many years and, you know, what are the major trends that you see going forward for the next following years? In fashion? Yes, in fashion in general and specifically around, obviously we talked about sustainability, but, you know, specifically around digitization, you know, AI that adoption, what do you see actually working and probably we change the industry, fashion industry, yeah. Uh... Well, definitely in terms of sustainability, um, there is this constant, this, this trends uh, of uh, recycling, repurposing, uh, repairing even, which is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like when you see like, uh, like these big brands and like I was in Paris like a few months ago and I see on the front door of, uh, of the shop, uh, like we buy, like we repair your sneakers, like come and bring your sneakers. Yeah. There are them, or we replace them, like something mm -hmm. I've never seen before, you know. Wow. So, so this, this is really cool to see that that nice. uh, uh, buying is uh, is not is not the first choice. Okay. Uh, I, I think if I'm not mis making a mistake, in Europe, the number one uh, website in the fashion, like uh, is is vintage. Vintage is like vintage, you know, yes. Um, Crazy. I more, mean, they, they grew 680% last year in, in business. 680%. Yes. Just insane. Just Amazing. Insane. Very nice. Yeah, definitely. So, on this, yeah, all kinds of trends like that, which is really nice. You know, even girls on, I see on, their, on Instagram, uh, fashion bloggers or, or designers, they buy like that stock and they repurpose it or they. They just, yeah, like all these things that, that are coming uh, to life. This is really nice to see. Yes. Regarding AI, wow, I, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> well, say, what do you think about all the immersive experience, like virtual try-ons and all this? What are your thoughts on this? I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, I think it's missing the human factor. Like, okay. Uh, I don't think that everything uh, with fashion can be solved with uh, with concepts like uh, you know with tech technology, like a yes. lot of it. Uh, and it's the same thing with uh, with you know uh, luxury uh, luxury in general. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the emotion that, that that happens between the between the clothes, yes. and you and the, the sales uh, person mm -hmm. in front of you. So. So yeah, missing this human factor. And this okay. is also why um, I wanted to do this fashion styling uh, uh, thing because I, I I I was missing for a long time <laughs> seeing people in real life and okay, yeah. <laughs> I was behind my computer for a long time. Okay, got it. So what? what uh, tell us more about that personal styling, you know, uh, activities that you do. Um. So basically, what I do is that. Uh, I, I can do either physical uh, meetings or, mm -hmm. or digital or online meetings. I can uh, look at somebody's closet and review what they have and give advice on uh, what to do, what to throw, and what to bring in. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> to define also the style if 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 it's missing, like uh, to redefine the style depending on the clients on the clients' needs. It's also uh, important to see that, um, like, if it's a local, like an Israeli, I would definitely introduce them to secondhand uh, clothing. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm working with uh, with a few shops in Jerusalem, uh, secondhand shops. So they mm -hmm. lent me their clothes for a few days. I'm showing the pieces to my clients. If they love it, they buy it. If not, I return it. 
<laughs> so and they don't have to go anywhere. I'm just doing it in their home, so they're yes. happy. They don't need to to dig. <laughs> And also, it's like a selection, like a curated selection according to their style. So, so, so this is what I do. And uh, and also in brackets, I don't, I, I, I know that a lot of people they don't want to dig in the secondhand stores. They have this cliche of, in mind of uh, of a dusty place. Uh, <laughs> okay. Disorganized. It's it's not the truth. It's not a, it's not like that anymore. Uh, that's yeah. it, and uh, and of course, if it's like a like an a remote uh, client, I would definitely suggest like a selection from online uh, products that I saw. Uh, and again, it will be targeted secondhand online, uh, yeah, secondhand pieces and sustainable products, sustainable basic uh, mm-hmm. yeah, t-shirts, etc. So yeah, this is my target to be hundred percent sustainable amazing amazing and i know you're organizing an event next week right in WeWork. that's right yeah yeah, yeah. um i'm very excited what? about that okay um next week so we are um doing this mini fashion week <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, in, at we work um first of all for a couple of days uh, there will be a swap uh swap uh we will swap clothes so the, the people who are at WeWork can bring their clothes and swap with other people, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is nice. Um, also, there will be a, a lecture by uh, one of the managers at the Boydem. So the Boydem, this is the secondhand store I'm working with. Mm-hmm. We talk about sustainability and secondhand and, and also how the system works. And finally, on Wednesday, there is this uh, style day that we do. It's like a full day. Uh, so people, for half an hour, will have like a 30 minutes uh, consultation. We will talk about their style. I will also bring like a selected uh, uh, amount of uh, clothes. And um, and in the end, we'll do like a small challenge just to, just to make it more fun. <laughs> So, nice. so yeah, this is, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Amazing. So why don't you share the location and the dates specifically? Uh, sure. So it's next Wednesday from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, at WeWork in Jerusalem on King George Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's and the about date? Uh, the date? date's 21st of February. 21st of February. <clears throat> Great. I would def- will definitely see you there. Okay, perfect. Excellent. <laughs> Great. I'm looking forward to it, really. So, Esther, tell us something about yourself that most of the professional network don't know about you. Like, basically, when I was a little girl, I um, uh, I, I was in my grandparents' house, and I used to, to dress up a lot mm-hmm. because it was like a big house with an attic, and they used to have this... Uh, this amazing clothes and, you know, 30 years, I mean, that they were like probably, uh, yeah, they, they, they have a crazy story. My grandparents, uh, my, my grandmother is from Switzerland and mm-hmm. my granddad is from Romania. They met in Paris. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. They have this crazy story of, uh, he left Romania during the war, it mm-hmm. was, uh, and I guess she wanted, you know, a better life. So, uh, so they managed to build something like that. Uh, they have so they they bought this house, and that house for me is like it was like uh, something unique. And uh, in the attic, they had like all kinds of clothes and things from the past from wow. their trees. So I used to, yeah, I used to play a lot there and dress up and wearing hats and all the, you know, uh, clothes. So I guess all this uh, makes all sense. <laughs> yes. So every, everything started in childhood for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Guess. yeah. Like I have tons of pictures of me dressing up. So, yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share with us? Uh, that's about it really (laughs) okay so thank you so much for your time it was very very interesting 
Uh, thank you for the story as well. It's very important for the people to know you. How can people find you? Um, on LinkedIn, uh, with the same name, Esther Richter Jao So. Mm -hmm. I'm also on social media. Uh, and I have this new blog about fashion and sustainability. It's called the theiconmuse.com. Uh, Great. That's... And we will share the information in the show notes. Thank you. As well. Excellent. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> For inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Your support means the world to us. If today's episode has been insightful for you, consider sharing it with someone who would also benefit. Even one share can make a big difference. Looking to elevate your e-commerce game? Discover Vimy, a multi-channel e-commerce platform that will transform your business with the power of shoppable video. Visit us at vimy.net to learn more. It's vimy, V-I-M-M-I dot net. Thank you for being part of our journey. Stay tuned for more invaluable insights in our next episode.